Good day everyone and welcome to Criminal Procedure. So our intended learning outcome this morning is for you to be able to define preliminary investigation, explain the procedure of preliminary investigation, know when warrant may issue, enumerate who are authorized to conduct preliminary investigation, and to determine when an accused may be lawfully arrested without a warrant. In the past, I presented to you a graph of what the entire criminal procedure looks like, no? Katoingon ko na it starts with the commission of the crime and then if there's a commission of a crime, it can be that it will be or a case can be instituted by filing a complaint by the offended party or there can be an arrest without a warrant. So, musod ang preliminary investigation in an instance where there's a filing of a complaint by the offended party. And it also depends on the penalty imposed by law for a particular crime that is committed. And that is what we are going to discuss karong adlawa. Kung kanus aman may tabo ang preliminary um, investigation and what is preliminary investigation. So let us start off with Rule 111, Section 1. Okay? It states that a preliminary investigation is an inquiry or proceeding to determine whether there is sufficient ground to engender a well-founded belief that a crime has been committed and the respondent is probably guilty thereof and should be held for trial. Balik, it is an inquiry or proceeding to determine whether there is sufficient ground to engender a well-founded belief that a crime has been committed and the respondent is probably guilty thereof and should be held for trial. Except as provided in Section 6 of this rule, a preliminary investigation is required to be conducted before the filing of a complaint or information for an offense where the penalty prescribed by law is at least pilato for years, two months, and one day without regard to the fine. Remember nga, originally, kaning a rule provided for preliminary investigation of offenses cognizable by the Regional Trial Court, which now integrally consists of one stage regardless of whatsoever conducts or whosoever conducts the same. The procedure being as outlined in Sections 1 to 8 of this rule and is principally based on the provisions of PD 911, a presidential decree providing a procedure for conducting preliminary investigation which is more conducive to speedy administration of justice. Pero in the latest revision of this rule, Canning Section 1 was amended to likewise make preliminary investigation a matter of right in courts of first level for offenses dili lang sa RTC but also in the courts of first level for offenses punished by 4 years, 2 months and 1 day. That is 4 to 1. Okay, remember that. 4 years, 2 months and 1 day. Mauning itawag na tog presyon correctional in its maximum period. Okay? Presyon correctional in its maximum period. However, in the resolution of the Supreme Court of August 30, 2005, in Administrative Matter Number 05-8-26, Supreme Court, Rules 112 and 114 of the said revised rules were further amended by removing the conduct of preliminary investigation from judges of first-level courts. You will see in the subsequent section nga kani adto appeal ang mga judges sa MTC nga mukanda ko preliminary investigation but karon under the amendment under the revised rules wala na sila ilabot sa enumeration this is effective October 3 2005 okay so um makita ni nato later on which which um section ang um, exclusion na sa mga judges in the conduct of the preliminary investigation okay now Let's go to the definition as what we have mentioned earlier. Ang preliminary investigation is an inquiry or a proceeding, the purpose of which is to determine whether there is sufficient ground to engender a well-founded belief. And awaha, there is sufficient ground to engender a well-founded belief that a crime has been committed. Okay? Sufficient ground ra. Okay? 
kung ang crime, habay na kumiter nga crime, and the respondent is probably guilty thereof and should be held for trial. Okay? Probable guilt ra ang gipangita. Okay? A preliminary investigation is a mere inquiry or a proceeding. It is not a trial and so does not involve the examination of witnesses by way of direct or cross-examination. Its purpose is not to declare the respondent guilty beyond reasonable doubt, but only to determine first, mo to akong gipangutanan ninyo last time, okay? Because ang purpose ragyod sa preliminary investigation is not to declare the respondent guilty beyond reasonable doubt, but only to determine first, on sama, whether or not a crime has been committed, and the second one is whether or not the respondent is probably guilty of the crime, okay? So, ang mga tanar gud nga i-answer in a preliminary investigation is not whether the respondent is guilty or he is innocent, but more accurately, ang imuha ang tubagon in a preliminary investigation is this: is the respondent probably guilty, and therefore should go to trial? Okay, mao na. So. The investigation is called preliminary because it is yet to be followed by the trial proper. And being merely preliminary, it is not the occasion for the full and exhaustive display of the prosecution's evidence. The issue of the presence or absence of the elements of the crime charged is evidentiary in nature and is a matter of defense that may be passed upon only after a full-blown trial on the merits. The validity and merit of a party's defense or accusation as well as the admissibility of testimony and evidence are better ventilated during the trial proper than at the preliminary investigation level. Okay? Remember also that in the conduct of preliminary investigation, the prosecution does not decide whether there is evidence beyond reasonable doubt of the guilt of the accused. Okay? He merely determines the existence of probable cause. Probable cause, okay? And to file the information if he finds it to be so. Okay? So, unsa man ang probable cause? Because probable cause man diya to ang gipangita in a preliminary investigation. Now, jurisprudence says that probable cause pertains to the existence of facts and circumstances as would excite the belief in a reasonable mind acting on the facts within the knowledge of the prosecutor that the person charged was guilty of the crime for which he was prosecuted. It is merely based on an opinion and reasonable belief. In determining probable cause, the average person weighs facts and circumstances without resorting to the calibration of the rules of evidence of which he or she has no technical knowledge. Okay? So, pasabot nga very simple ra ang require in a preliminary investigation. Because ang himo example here is that the average person, kung iyan timbang-timbangon ang mga facts and circumstances, sa iyang pagtimbang-timbang, dapat dili niya i-consider ang rules of evidence. Okay? And he has to assume that ang technical knowledge would not apply in that investigation and that based lang yun sa iyahang pagtimbang-timbang anang kasuha that he or she is confronted, makita niya, nga naagyoy, naagyoy na hitabo nga krimen o posible yun nga ang nagkumiter sa, sa krimen mao ang respondent in a particular case. Okay? So, the evidence necessary to establish probable cause is based only on the likelihood or the probability of guilt. Okay? Probable cause does not refer to evidence which would justify a conviction. While it refers to probability of guilt, it requires more than bare suspicion. Okay? Now, you also have to take note that there are different kinds of determination of probable cause, okay? The determination of probable cause may be by the executive department and is often referred to as the preliminary investigation, while the determination of probable cause by the judicial department is frequently called a preliminary examination or preliminary inquiry, okay? The two kinds of determination of probable cause would be that of executive and judicial. 
Okay, it is exercised by the executive and the judicial department. The executive determination of probable cause is one made during the preliminary investigation. Okay, so can ang conduct sa or pag determine sa probable cause in the preliminary investigation that is done by the executive um, department that is the prosecution's office. Okay, it is a function that properly pertains to the prosecutor, public prosecutor who is given a broad discretion to determine whether probable cause exists and to charge those whom he believes to have committed the crime as defined by the law and thus should be held for trial. Okay? The judicial determination of probable cause, on the other hand, is one made by the judge. This is to ascertain whether a warrant of arrest should be issued against the accused. The judge must satisfy himself that based on the evidence submitted, there is necessity for placing the accused under custody in order not to frustrate the ends of justice. If the judge finds no probable cause, the judge cannot be forced to issue the arrest warrant. Okay? So, timan ina, um, when it is done by the executive department, the, the conduct there is preliminary investigation to determine probable cause and later on to um, determine if an information may be filed in court. If it is done by the judicial department, this is done by the judge, ang iyahaan ng itanawon ng probable cause is kung kailangan ba ang isyuhan o warrant ang respondent or ang accused. Okay? So, basically, that's the kinds of determination of probable cause. Cause. Now, there are also instances when probable cause needs to be established, okay? In uh, It is not only in preliminary investigation or preliminary examination that probable cause needs to be determined. The Supreme Court instructs that in the Philippines, there are four instances in the revised rules of criminal procedure where probable cause is needed to be established. In sections 1 and 3 of Rule 112, this is done by the investigating officer to determine whether there is sufficient ground to engender a well-founded belief that a crime has been committed and the respondent is probably guilty thereof and should be held for trial. A preliminary investigation is required before the filing of a complaint or information for an offense where the penalty prescribed by law is at least four years, two months, and one day without regard to the fine. Now, in section 6 and 9 of Rule 112, now sections 5 and 8, no renumber naman na sila, by the judge to determine whether a warrant of arrest or a commitment order if the accused has already been arrested, shall be issued and that there is a necessity of placing the respondent under immediate custody in order not to frustrate the ends of justice. In Section 5B of Rule 113, by peace officer or private person making a warrantless arrest when an offense has just been committed and he has probable cause to believe based on personal knowledge of facts or circumstances that a person to be arrested has committed it, and in Section 4 of Rule 126, by the judge to determine whether a search warrant shall be issued and only upon probable cause in connection with one specific offense to be determined personally by the judge after examination under oath or affirmation of the complainant and the witnesses he may produce and particularly describing the place to be searched and the things to be seized, which may be anywhere in the Philippines. Okay? So, on some day, ang purpose sa preliminary investigation. What are the purposes of preliminary investigation? According to jurisprudence, this is to inquire concerning the commission of a crime and the connection of the accused with it in order that he may be informed of the nature and character of the crime charged against him. And if there is probable cause for believing him guilty, that the state shall take the necessary steps to bring him to trial. Second, to preserve the evidence and keep the witnesses within the control of the state and to determine the amount of bail if the offense is bailable. Okay? Now, remember also that the right to a preliminary investigation is not a constitutional right. Okay? The holding of a preliminary investigation is re not required by the Constitution. You cannot see it in the Constitution. Okay? The right thereto is of a statutory character and may be invoked only when specially 
or when specifically created by statute. So while the right to a well, the right is statutory rather than constitutional, since it has been established by statute, it becomes a component of due process in criminal justice. And when so granted by statute, the right is not a mere formal or technical right. It is now a substantive right. Okay? Na asyagigikanan. Substantive right. And to deny the claim of the accused to a preliminary investigation would be to deprive him the full measure of his right to do process. Now, where the denial is tainted with grave abuse of discretion amounting to lack of jurisdiction, a ground for a petition for certiorari and mandamus would now arise. Okay? Remember that. Now, let's look at the case of Rodrigo Duterte versus the Honorable Sandigan Bayan. Okay? According to this case, a preliminary investigation takes on an adversarial quality and an entirely different procedure comes into play. And this must be so because the purpose of a preliminary investigation or a previous inquiry of some kind before an accused person is placed on trial is to secure the innocent against hasty, malicious, and oppressive prosecution and to protect him from an open and public accusation of a crime from the trouble, the expenses, and anxiety of public trial. It is also intended to protect the state from having to conduct useless and expensive trials. And while the right is statutory rather than constitutional in its fundament, it is a component part of due process. Okay, The right to have a preliminary investigation conducted before being bound over to trial for a criminal offense and hence formally at risk of incarceration or some other penalty is not a mere formal or technical right. It is a substantive right. Okay? And to deny the accused claim to a preliminary investigation would be to deprive him of the full measure of his right to due process. Okay? So this amplifies the contention at the earlier, no? Nga, while it may be a statutory right, it is a substantive right. And to deny that substantive right would be to deprive him of his due process. Okay? Ngayon pagod ang Supreme Court in this case nga indeed since a preliminary investigation is designed to screen cases for trial, only evidence may be considered. Okay? While reports and even raw information may justify the initiation of an investigation, the stage of preliminary investigation can be held only after sufficient evidence has been gathered and evaluated, warranting the eventual prosecution of the case in court. Onya, you reiterate, Pagid, sa Supreme Court, nga although such a preliminary investigation is not a trial and is not intended to usurp the function of the trial court, it is not a cost, a casual affair. Okay, The officer conducting the same investigates or inquires into the facts concerning the commission of the crime with the end in view of determining whether or not an information may be prepared against the accused. Indeed, a preliminary investigation is in effect a realistic judicial appraisal of the merits of the case. Sufficient proof of the guilt of the accused must be adduced so that when the case is tried, the trial court may not be bound as a matter of law to order an acquittal. A preliminary investigation has then been called a judicial inquiry. It is a judicial proceeding. An act becomes judicial when there is opportunity to be heard and for production and weighing of evidence and a decision is rendered thereof. Okay? That's what the Supreme Court said in the case of Rodrigo Duterte and Benjamin de Guzman versus the Honorable Sindigan Bayan. Okay, now let's proceed to Rule 112, Section 2. Okay? Who are the officers authorized to conduct preliminary investigation? So the following under Section 2 are authorized or may conduct preliminary investigation. First, the provincial or city prosecutors and their assistants, the national and regional state prosecutors and other officers as may be authorized by law. Their authority to conduct preliminary investigation shall include all crimes, 
cognizable by the proper court in their respective territorial jurisdiction. This is amended by Administrative Matter 0506-26-SC in August 30, 2005, effective October 3, 2005. So, before sa amendments, ang mga judges sa municipal trial court, sa municipal circuit trial courts were actually allowed to conduct preliminary investigations. Um, judges sa uh, first level courts under the amendment are no longer allowed to conduct preliminary investigation. Okay, This is pursuant to the amendment made by the Supreme Court on August 30, 2005 in the Administrative Matter 050626-SC. Okay, which took effect, as I said earlier, in October 3, 2005. So, the same rule also applies to the regional trial court judges. So, dalit na lang kasi sa guhuna, tulo na lang, provincial or city prosecutors and their assistants, the national and regional state prosecutors, and other officers as may be authorized by law. Okay? So, kinsa maning mga, mga officers authorized by law to conduct preliminary investigation. So, the following are also authorized to conduct a preliminary investigation. Una, under the amendments of the Omnibus Election Code, the COMELEC, through its duly authorized legal officers, okay, has the power concurrent with the other prosecuting arms of the government to conduct preliminary investigation of all election offenses punishable under the Omnibus Election Code and to prosecute the same, okay? Also, the Office of the Ombudsman has the authority to investigate and prosecute on its own or on complaint by, an, by any person or any act or mission or of any act or mission of any public officer employee, officer agency when such act or mission appears to be illegal, unjust, improper, or inefficient. It has primary jurisdiction over cases cognizable by the Sandigan Bayan and in the exercise of the primary jurisdiction, it may take over at any stage from any investigatory agency of the government the investigation of such cases. Also, the PCGG or the Presidential Commission on Good Government with the assistance of the Office of the Solicitor General and the other government agencies is empowered to investigate, file, and prosecute cases investigated by it. Okay? Now on to rule 112. Hangak na ko guys, sorry. Okay, rule 112 provides that the preliminary investigation, mo ang procedure, okay? The preliminary investigation shall be conducted in the following manner. Una, the complaint shall state the address of the respondent and shall be accompanied by the affidavits of the complainant and his witnesses as well as other supporting documents to establish probable cause. They shall be in such number of copies as there are respondents, plus two copies for the official file. The affidavit shall be subscribed and sworn to before any prosecutor or government official authorized to administer oath or in their absence or unavailability before a notary public, each of whom must certify that he personally examined the affiance and that he is satisfied that they voluntarily executed and understood their affidavits. Next, within 10 days after the filing of the complaint, the investigating officer shall either dismiss it if he finds no ground to continue with the investigation or issue a subpoena to the respondent attaching to it, a copy of a complaint and its supporting affidavits and documents. The respondent shall have the right to examine the evidence submitted by the complainant, which he may not have been furnished, and to, to copy them at his expense. Then in the evidence, or if the evidence is voluminous, the complainant may be required to specify those which he intends to present against the respondent. And these shall be made available for the examination and copying by the respondent at his expense. Objects as evidence need not be furnished a party but shall be made available for examination, copying, or photographing at the expense of the requesting party. Now, receive na og subpina ang respondent, okay? Within 10 days from the receipt of the subpoena with the complaint and supporting affidavits and documents, 
ang respondent shall submit his counter affidavit and that of his witnesses and other supporting documents relied upon for his defense. The counter affidavit shall be subscribed, same gihapon, and sworn to and certified as provided in paragraph A of this section. And of course, ang copies ana has to be furnished to the complainant. The respondent shall not be allowed to file a motion to dismiss in lieu of the counter affidavit. Counter affidavit, ragud na iyang file, okay? If the respondent cannot be subpoenaed or if subpoena does not submit counter affidavits within ten days period within a ten day period, the investigating officer shall resolve the complaint based on the evidence presented by the complainant. Okay, mudisider na siya. And then the investigating officer may set a hearing if there are facts and issues to be clarified from a party or a witness. The parties can be present at the hearing but without the right to examine or cross-examine. They may, however, submit to the investigating officer questions which may be asked to the party or witness concerned. The hearing shall be held within 10 days from the submission of the counter-affidavits and other documents or from the expiration of the period of their submission. And it shall be terminated within 5 days. And then within 10 days after the investigation, the investigating officer shall now determine whether or not there is sufficient ground to hold the respondent for trial. So basically, based on the filings of both the complainant and the respondent, diha na tibang tibangon ni Piscal kung naabay sufficient ground to engender a belief that a crime has been committed and whether or not the respondent is probably guilty thereof and should be held for trial. Okay, so basically, that's the procedure under Rule 112. Let's now have Section 4 and Section 5 of Rule 112. Section 4 pertains to the resolution of investigating prosecutor and its review. So if the investigating prosecutor finds cause to hold the respondent for trial, he shall prepare the resolution and the information. Okay, now, kita na siya na probable cause. So na may bato niya. Mag-prepare na siya resolution. Resolution mo na siya decision, okay? And then together with the resolution na ay information, okay? And then, he shall certify under oath in the information that he, or as shown by the record, an authorized officer has personally examined the complainant and his witnesses and that there is reasonable ground to believe that a crime has been committed and that the accused is probably guilty thereof and then that the accused was informed of the complaint and of the evidence submitted against him and that he was given an opportunity to submit controverting evidence otherwise he shall recommend the dismissal of the complaint okay kung wa na makita i dismiss niya ang complaint then within 5 days from his resolution he shall forward the record of the case to the provincial or city prosecutor or the chief state prosecutor or to the ombudsman or his deputy in cases of offenses cognizable by the Sinigan Bayan in the exercise of its original jurisdiction. And they shall act on the resolution in 10 days from their receipt thereof and shall immediately inform the parties of such action. So either iyan ang approve or iyan ang i-deny ang direkomend nga resolution or inform and information sa investigating prosecutor. Now, no complaint... or information may be filed or dismissed by an investigating prosecutor without the prior written authority or approval of the provincial or city prosecutor or the chief state prosecutor or the ombudsman or his deputy, where the investigating prosecutor recommends the dismissal of the complaint, by, but, but, his, but his recommendation is disapproved by the provincial or city prosecutor or chief state prosecutor and the ombudsman or his deputy in the ground that probable cause exists, the latter may by himself file the information against the respondent or direct any other assistant prosecutor or state prosecutor to do so without conducting another preliminary investigation. Okay? So, kung si investigating prosecutor mo recommend siya dismissal sa complaint, pero ang iyahang recommendation is disapproved by the head, the provincial or the city prosecutor, or the chief state prosecutor, and the ombudsman as the case may be, ang kanang provincial or city prosecutor, chief state prosecutor, may by himself file the information against the respondent. Okay? Yeah, pwede siyang mo-direct sa other assistant prosecutor to do 
the same without conducting another preliminary investigation. Okay? Now, if upon petition by a proper party under such rules as the Department of Justice may prescribe or motu proprio, the Secretary of Justice reverses or modifies the resolution of the provincial or city prosecutor, a chief state prosecutor, he shall direct the prosecutor concerned to either file the corresponding information without conducting another preliminary investigation or to dismiss or move for the dismissal of the complaint or information with notice to the parties. The same rule shall also apply in preliminary investigation conducted by the other officers or by the officers of the office of the ombudsman. Okay? Um, this is what's the rule, what the rule says if there is a petition filed by a proper party. Now, tanos aman may issue ang warrant of arrest even if there is no preliminary investigation. Okay? Or, tanos aman may issue ang warrant of arrest after receiving the, or after conducting the preliminary investigation. Okay? When warrant of arrest may issue. Under Section 5, <clears throat> Uh, this is issued by the regional trial court. Within 10 days from the filing of the complaint or information, the judge shall personally evaluate the resolution of the prosecutor and its supporting evidence. Okay? And its supporting evidence. And then, he may, uh -huh, he may immediately di dismiss the case if the evidence on record clearly fails to establish probable cause. If he finds probable, okay, kung tanaw niya, walay um, probable cause, hmm, pwede i-dismiss. But if he finds probable cause, muna ako giyong ganihang executive, ay, judicial determination probable cause, if he finds probable cause, he shall issue a warrant of arrest or a commitment order if the accused has already been arrested pursuant to a warrant issued by the judge who conducted the preliminary investigation or when the complaint or information was filed pursuant to Section 6 of this rule. Okay. Now, in case of doubt on the existence of probable cause, the judge may order the prosecutor to present additional evidence within five days from notice and the issue must be resolved by the court within... 30 days from the filing of the complaint or information, okay? Now, by the MTC, when required pursuant to the second paragraph of Section 1 of this rule, the preliminary investigation of cases falling under the original jurisdiction of the MTC, MTCC, MTC, and MCTC shall be conducted by the prosecutor. And then the procedure for issuance of warrant of arrest by the judge shall be governed by paragraph A of this section. Same lang yapon. Tanawon kung may probable cause. If wala, pwede niya dismiss. If makita siya probable cause, may issue siya o warrant of arrest. Okay? Now, kanus aman ang warrant? Dilit necessary. A warrant of arrest shall not issue if the accused is already under detention pursuant to a warrant issued by the, by the municipal trial court in accordance with paragraph B of this section or if the complaint or information was filed pursuant to section 6 of this rule or is for an offense penalized by fine only the court shall then proceed in the exercise of its original jurisdiction okay now there's this so-called term searching question and answers okay this term means can in searching questions and answers means taking into consideration the purpose of the preliminary investigation, which is to determine whether there is sufficient ground to engender a well-founded belief that a crime has been committed and that the respondent is probably guilty thereof and should be held for trial. Such questions as may have the tendency to show the commission of the crime and the perpetrator thereof. Then what would be searching questions would depend on what is sought to be inquired into such as the nature of the offense, the date, the time and place of the commission, the subject, his age, education, status, financial and social circumstances, and so forth. 
The points that are subject of inquiry may differ from case to case. Hence, the questions to a great degree depend upon the judge making the investigation. And this duty of the investigating judge is fulfilled when he examined under oath the witnesses by asking questions adopted by the previous investigation, reduced to writing in the form of question and answers, usually sworn to and considered by him as sufficiently searching. Okay? Now, remember that the determination of probable cause by the prosecutor is for a purpose different from that to be made by the judge. The prosecutor determines whether or not there is reasonable ground to believe that the accused is guilty of the offense charged and should be held for trial for which an information is to be filed. A judge, on the other hand, determines whether a warrant of arrest should be issued so that the accused may be held in custody in order not to frustrate the ends of justice. Muna kong giingon. Okay? Now, what happens when the, when the accused is lawfully arrested without a warrant? Okay? When a person is lawfully arrested without a warrant involving an offense which requires a preliminary investigation, the complaint or information may be held or may be filed by the prosecutor without need of such investigation, provided an inquest has been conducted in accordance with the existing rules. Okay. In the absence or unavailability of an inquest prosecutor, the complaint may be filed by the offended party or a peace officer directly with the proper court on the basis of an affidavit of the offended party or arresting officer. When you inquest, um, this is done by the prosecutor. And what happens here is that pangutan on na si respondent. Ikaw ne, oh, diin ka atong panahon sa um, alleged crime. Okay, were you present? Nganangana. That's basically inquest. Murarag mangutan na si fiscal sa respondent. Okay? Now, before the complaint or information is filed, the person arrested may ask for a preliminary investigation in accordance with this rule, okay? So, pwede nga uh, pwede nga makaasag preliminary investigation if if under the rules required a preliminary investigation, ha? Okay. But he must sign a waiver of the provisions of Article 125 of the Revised Penal Code as amended in the presence of his counsel. Okay? Article 125. Then, notwithstanding the waiver, he may apply for for bail, and an investigation must be terminated within 15 days from its inception. After the filing of the complaint or information in court without preliminary investigation, the accused may, within five days from the time he learns of its filing, ask for a preliminary investigation with the same right to adduce evidence in his defense as provided in this rule. Okay. So the only exception to the right to preliminary investigation of an offense where such investigation is mandatory is when the accused is lawfully detained without a warrant and he refuses to sign a waiver of Article 125 of the Revised Penal Code. Okay? On something now Article 125 of the Revised Penal Code, this basically punishes the detention of a person arrested without a warrant beyond the periods allowed therein without corresponding information having been filed. If the accused refuses or fails to sign the requisite waiver, an information should forthwith be filed against him, with the right on the part of the accused to move for the investigation in five days from the time he learns of the filing of the said information, not from the actual date of the filing. Okay? So, on some day, um, if the accused was lawfully arrested without a warrant, basically, na na complain sa iya ha, bailan na siya dito sa piskalia, inya, nadakop naman na siya because warrantless arrest man eh. So, ang mahitabo dito, either inquest or iyang i, iyang i-wave iyang Article 125 of the Revised Penal Code ka ng, um, you are detaining someone longer than what is prescribed by by the law, that's Rule 125. So if you want to ask for a preliminary investigation, you have to waive that particular article. So sign ka of waiver. So upon signing that waiver, pwede na kamo request for the conduct of preliminary investigation. Okay? So where the information was amended 
without a new preliminary investigation having been conducted. The five-day period is computed from the time the accused learns of the filing of the said amended information. This happens when um, you did not sign the waiver. Okay, what can you sign waiver? Of course, na may time element concerned, the file na information against you, and now when you learn of the information filed against you, you have five days to ask for a reinvestigation. Okay? The waiver of the provision of 125 of the revised penal code with a person lawfully arrested without a warrant does not preclude him from applying for bail. Okay? You can always ask for bail, even if you waive Article 125, or even if it is just during the preliminary, if it is still during the preliminary investigation, okay? Note that while a person, while a preliminary investigation is undertaken, the person arrested is still under detention. So to effect his release, he may apply for bail notwithstanding the waiver of the provisions of Article 125 of the Revised Penal Code and even if no information has yet been filed against him. His right to bail is supported not only by Section 6 of Rule 112 but also Section 17, Paragraph C of Rule 114 which declares that any person in custody who is not yet charged in court may apply for bail with any court in the province, city, or municipality where he is held. Okay. The bail must, however, be applied for and issued by the court in the province, city, or municipality where the person arrested is held. Okay. So, I'm going to emphasize because this was discussed in the case of Ruiz versus Bildia. Okay. Ruiz versus Bildia. Okay, so what happened when they are in Ruiz versus Bildia? Okay, in an affidavit complaint filed with the Office of the Court Administrator, OCA, see complainant Shirley Ruiz charged respondent Judge Bildia Jr. of Branch 57 of the Regional Trial Courts in Carlos City, Negros Occidental with Bruce with gross ignorance of the law and grave abuse of authority in connection with the grant of bail and issuance of a release order in favor of one Lourdes Estrella Santos. Ruiz, in this case, is the private complainant in IS number 2000-1031 for violation of anti-fencing law pending before the DOJ. Santos, who was arrested during entrapment operations relative to the carnapping of Ruiz's vehicle, was one of the respondents therein. After her arrest on May 24, 2000, Santos was detained in Camp Crame, Quezon City, pending the filing of the formal charges in court. Upon inquest, she executed a waiver of the provisions of Article 125 of the Revised Penal Code in relation to Rule 112, Section 7 of the then-applicable 1985 Rules of Criminal Procedure. The inquest prosecutor thus set the hearing of the preliminary investigation on May 31, 2000 at 2 p.m. However, on May 30, 2000, si Santos obtained an order of release signed by the respondent Judge Baldia who was then de detailed as assisting judge of Branch 272 of the Regional Trial Court of Marikina City. The respondent judge, Pildia, apparently granted bail to Santos and approved the corresponding bail bond without serving notice to the prosecutor. Consequently, Ruiz filed the instant administrative complaint contending that the respondent judge Bildia had no authority to grant bail to Santos since the investigating prosecutor has yet to conclude the preliminary investigation. She claimed that for as long as the information has not yet been filed in court, a court has no power to grant bail to a detained person since it has not yet acquired jurisdiction over the person of the accused. In his comment dated August 14, 2000, C. Judge Bildia maintained that Section 1C Rule 114 of the Rules of Court allows any person in custody, even if not formally charged in court, to apply for bail. Okay. Meanwhile, the OCA directed the Clerk of Court of Branch 272 of Marikina City, Attorney Elvira Badilio Adarlo, to confirm whether a formal petition for admission to bail 
was filed by Santos or her counsel and whether Executive Judge Ruben de la Cruz and Presiding Judge Olga Enriquez were absent or unavailable on May 30, 2000 when the release order was issued. On June 18, 2002, Attorney Baldeo Adarlo informed the OCA that the records of the release orders and bail bonds in her custody did not include the subject release order issued by the respondent Judge Belia. As such, she could not tell whether a formal petition for admission of bail was filed by Santos. She likewise confirmed that Executive Judge La Cruz and Presiding Judge Enriquez were present and available on the day that Judge Baldia issued the release order. Now, on November 20, 2002, the complainant or the complaint was redacted as a regular administrative matter. At the same time, the parties were required to manifest whether they are willing to submit the case for resolution based on the pleadings filed. The parties failed to file their manifestation since the filing thereof was deemed waived. And in its report dated July 31, 2000, 2002, the OCA recommended that the respondent judge be held liable for gross ignorance of the law and fined in the amount of 5,000 pesos. It opined that although a person in custody and who is not formally charged in court could apply for bail pursuant to Section 17C Rule 114, the grant thereof by Judge Baldia was nonetheless irregular. It noted if one was filed, uh, it noted that no formal petition or application for bail was filed by Santos. And even if one was filed, the Marikina courts could not have properly taken cognizance of the same since Santos was detained at Camp Crame in Quezon City. And there was no showing that the regular judge of Branch 272 RTC Marikina City was unavailable to act on the application for bail. So how did the Supreme Court decide on this one? Ning on the Supreme Court, yes, we agree with the recommendation of the OCA. Record shows that the Executive Judge De La Cruz and Presiding Judge Enriquez were present on May 30, 2000 to act on the bail application of Santos. And when the respondent Judge Bildia acted on the bail application of Santos on May 30, 2000, his designation was male and assisting judge in the RTC Marikina City. His permanent station being in Branch 57, RTC San Carlos, Negros Occidental. And as such, his authority in the Marikina City is limited and he could only act on an application for bail filed within or therewith in the absence or unavailability of the regular judge. And concededly, a person lawfully arrested and detained but who was not yet formally charged in court can seek his provisional release through the filing of an application for bail. He need not wait for a formal complaint or information to be filed since bail is available to all persons where the offense is bailable. Section 7 now, now 6, Rule 112 of the Rules of Criminal Procedure provides that a judge could grant a bail to a person lawfully arrested but without a warrant upon waiver of his right under Article 125 of the Revised Penal Code, as Santos had done upon her inquest. Undeniably, too, Santos was entitled to bail as a matter of right since the offense with which she was charged does not carry the penalty of life imprisonment, reclusion perpetua, or death. Notwithstanding, it was incumbent upon Respondent Judge Bildia to grant bail to Santos in accordance with established rules and procedure. Respondent Judge Bildia failed in this respect and must thus be held administratively liable. Okay? And Ningon ang Supreme Court, Gisait niya ang Section 17, um, Paragraph C, Rule 114 of the concept of bail nga it may be filed by any person in custody who is not yet charged in court with any court in the province, city, or municipality where he is held. Okay? So, here it appears according to the Supreme Court that no formal application or petition for bail was ever filed before the RTC Marikina City and there was no records of the application of the release order issued by the respondent Judge Baldia and neither, neither was there a hearing conducted thereon nor the prosecutor notified of the bail application and further in the Supreme Court nga Judge Baldia disregarded basic procedural rules when he granted bail to Santos without hearing and 
notice and without the latter having filed a formal petition for bail. Accordingly, the prosecution was deprived of procedural due process for which the respondent Judge Bildia must be held accountable. There is no dearth of jurisprudence on the rules to be applied in the grant of bail, and these same rules have been incorporated in the rules of court, of which a judge must have more than just a superficial understanding if he were to discharge his functions properly and competently. Saba Supreme Court, no? Indeed, everyone, especially a judge, according to the Supreme Court, is presumed to know the law. And when, as in this case, the law is so elementary, not to be aware of it constitutes gross ignorance of the law. Okay? So in this case, ningun na Supreme Court, nga wala person lawfully arrested and detained and not yet formally charged can apply for bail, the application must be filed in the province, city, or municipality where the person arrested is held. And in this case, the bail should have been filed with Quezon City Court, which has the authority to grant bail and not in Marikina Court. Okay? Now on to the section on records and cases not requiring preliminary investigation. So, to basahon records, the supporting information or complaint, an information or complaint filed in court shall be supported by the affidavits and counter affidavits of the parties and their witnesses, together with the other supporting evidence and the resolution of the case. The record of the preliminary investigation, whether conducted by a judge or fiscal, shall not form part of the record of the case. However, the court on its own initiative or in motion of any party may order the production of the record or any of its part when necessary in the resolution of the case or in any incident therein or when it is to be introduced as an evidence in the case by the requesting party. So since the record of the preliminary investigation, guys, shall not form part of the case records in the RTC, the court is not um, compelled to moto proprio take judicial cognizance thereof, even if the same are in the records of the case therein. Such record must be introduced as evidence, and the judge may, however, order the production of the said records. Okay? Now to the last section, section 8. Cases not requiring a preliminary investigation nor covered by the rule on summary procedure. Okay? If filed with the prosecutor, if the complaint is filed directly with the prosecutor involving an offense punishable by imprisonment of less than four years, two months, and one day, the procedure outlined in Section 3A of this rule shall be observed. Okay? The prosecutor shall act on the complaint based on the affidavits of the affidavits and other supporting documents submitted by the complainant within 10 days from its filing. If filed in the municipal trial court, um, the procedure in Section 3A of this rule shall be observed. Same, Japan. And if within 10 days after the filing of the complaint or information, the judge finds no probable cause after personally evaluating the, the evidence or after personally examining in writing and other and under oath, the complaint and his witnesses in the form of searching question and answers, he shall dismiss the same. He may, however, require the submission of the additional evidence within 10 days from the notice to determine further the existence of probable cause. Now, if the judge still finds no probable cause despite the additional evidence, he shall within 10 days from its submission or expiration of the said period dismiss the case. And if when he finds probable cause, he shall issue an arrest warrant or warrant of arrest or a commitment order kung ang accused had already been arrested and hold him for trial. However, if the judge is satisfied that there is no necessity for placing the accused under custody, he may just issue summons instead of a warrant of arrest. Okay? So, basically, this section refers to cases within the exclusive original jurisdiction of the inferior courts. 
but the penalty for the offense is either less than four years, two months, and one day, or not covered by the rule on summary procedure. Hence, no preliminary investigation is conducted, but the case has to be tried in accordance with the regular procedure in the said inferior courts. The revised rule on summary procedure does not provide for a preliminary investigation prior to the filing of a criminal case. A criminal case within the scope of the rule shall be commenced either by the filing of the complaint or information in the MTC. However, in Metro Manila and other chartered cities, such cases shall be commenced only by information except when the offense cannot be prosecuted the official. Okay, so that ends our discussion in Rule 112, Preliminary Investigation. I'm sorry, nagang ako. And I hope you learned something and I hope that we were able to accomplish our intended learning outcomes today which is to define preliminary investigation explain the procedure of preliminary investigation know when warrant may issue and enumerate who are authorized to conduct preliminary investigation and determine when an accused may be lawfully arrested without a warrant okay so thank you very much i'll see you guys on tuesday